Hello and welcome to the Oracle Identity and Access Management Insights session. Our topic is basic troubleshooting for Windows Native Authentication in Oracle Access Manager. The focus of the Insights session series is the 12C version of OAM. However, many of the concepts in this presentation will apply to earlier versions as well. For this topic, we will start with a description of the WNA process and then cover some key dependencies, followed by troubleshooting tools and techniques with some additional re references at the end. The WNA process is a three-way negotiation between the client machine of the user, the OAM server, and the key distribution center, or KDC, in the Active Directory domain. The process starts with the user being authenticated to the client computer. When the user navigates to a protected URL in the browser, the OAM server sends a request to the client computer for a Kerbos token. The client computer uses the IP address of the incoming request to do a DNS lookup of the host name for the OAM server and requests the Kerbos token from the KDC. The Kerbos token is issued by the KDC for the specified host name and forwarded by the client computer to the OAM server. OEM sends the Kerberos token to the KDC to negotiate authentication. The KDC responds with an authentication assertion for the user. OEM decrypts the assertion and uses the ID attribute, usually SAM account name, to map the user to the local ID store, completes the authentication, and redirects the user to the protected URL. The key dependencies for WNA to be successful include an active user account that represents the OAM server in the AD instance where the KDC is located, and it has to have a unique service principal name or SPN. If there are duplicate SPNs or the account is locked, then the KDC can't validate the Kerbos token. The user's client computer must be within the AD domain. If the user is logging in from a client computer that is outside the domain, even via VPN, the WNA will not work. The host name for the OAM server used to configure WNA must be the outermost host name. This means that if you have a proxy or a load balancer in front of the OAM server, it is that host name and not the physical host where the OAM server is installed. The client computer is going to request a Kerbos token for the host name that it receives the token request from, and the KDC will only validate the token if, if the validation request comes from the host name that the token was issued to. The reverse DNS lookup of the IP address must return the same host name for the OEM server that will be sending the validation request to the KDC. As discussed on the previous slide, the user client computer does a DNS lookup of the IP address to get the host name for the Kerbos token request. If the host name is only an alias on the load balancer, the DNS lookup of the IP address will not return the correct host name. It has to be the C name or it has to be in an A record on the load balancer. There also has to be compatible encryption between the OEM server and the KDC. The OEM server is configured with a 4,000 byte header size limit. This may need to be increased to accommodate the larger header sizes that result from the size of the Kerbos tokens. Different factors determine the size of the Kerbos token, such as the number of groups a user belongs to in AD. So you may have users whose login fails while other users login succeed with the same header size limit. The first tool for troubleshooting WNA is the HTTP header trace. This can be created using a program like Fiddler, which creates a .saz file, or you can use the tools in the browser for creating a header trace in a .har or .xml format. If you're not permitted to install Fiddler on a network computer, you can export the header trace to a standalone computer where Fiddler is available. Fiddler is not required to analyze the header trace, but it is helpful. The things to check for in the header trace are, is the request making it back to the originally requested protected URL 
with an OAM authn cookie set. This would indicate that WNA was su successful and whatever issue is occurring is not because of WNA. A best practice is to use a generic test resource such as print ENV on the web server where the WebGate is deployed to test WNA during initial configuration and whenever you are troubleshooting a runtime issue. This isolates the testing and rules out problems that may be occurring past the WNA, such as unique requirements for SSO integration with protected applications. The header trace also lets us see if the user's client computer is providing a valid Kerberos token. You can also check the header size at the point where the Kerberos token is received to see if there may be an issue with the OEM server header size limit settings. Additionally, you can check for looping, which indicates some problem in the Kerberos validation processing by the KDC. The KList and KInit commands are listed in the WNA configuration section of the OEM admin guide as a validation step, but can also be used to test and troubleshoot WNA from outside OAM. You can also set Kerberos debug options in the set domain ENV script and trace logging on the OAM server in order to get more detailed messages in the OAM server dot out and diagnostic logs. This is an example of a header trace opened in Fiddler that shows us that WNA was successful. The 401 response on slash OAM slash cred collect servlet slash WNA is the request from the OAM server to the client computer for the Kerberos token. The 302 response for the same URL is the response with the Kerberos token included. Since we see these responses followed by a redirect to the originally requested protected resource and there is an OAM authn cookie set, this indicates that WNA was successful. If we examine the security section of the 302 response, we see the authorization negotiation, which contains the token provided by the client computer. If it starts with YII, we know it is a Kerberos token. However, if it starts with TIRM, we know that, th that this is an NTLM token and something has gone wrong with the WNA configuration or the user is logging in from a computer that is outside the AD domain. You would need to research the various reasons for receiving an NTLM token to troubleshoot and isolate the cause. This is an example where we see the header size in the 302 response where the Kerberos token is received is greater than the default header size limit for the OEM server, which is 4,000 bytes. The header size limit setting can be increased using a WLST command, config trusted inputs for three parameters, default header max size, default parameter max size, and default max size. The best practice is to set the value to 1000 to 2000 greater than the value seen in the header trace of an affected user. This may need to be increased further if you have other users with larger Kerberos tokens. Here we see an example of looping on the 302 response and an example of what the user might see in the browser. This indicates that something is causing the negotiation with the KDC to fail. Possible causes are OAM server header size limit set too low and the Kerberos token is being truncated. There is a problem with the OAM server or user count in AD, such as it being locked, or there are duplicate service principal names in AD for the user and the KDC can't match the Kerberos token to a single user account. This can also indicate an encryption mismatch between the cipher used by the KDC and the cipher or ciphers configured in the krb5.com file on the OEM server. In these examples, we see possible responses of the knet command. The first two are examples of errors that may give some indication of what is failing. The first one results from not having the realm in all caps on the KT pass command used to generate the key, the key tab file. And the second one indicates an encryption mismatch as discussed on the previous slide. The final example is the expected result if WNA is working.
The two Java debug settings can be added into the extra Java properties section of the set domain env script located in the domain home slash bin directory. These will generate messages in the OEM server.outlog. If you don't have the .outlog configured or you want to isolate the output from your troubleshooting, you can use the nohup command line startup of the OEM managed server to generate the .outlog. This is an example of the output from the Kerberos debuggers that indicates the encryption mismatch. There could also be indications of other issues in these messages. You would want to examine the OEM diagnostic log as well for the related error messages seen with the Trace32 logging set. You can review the WNA configuration section of the OEM admin guide to make sure you have completed the necessary steps and to reference the validation commands. The two KM notes will provide additional details for troubleshooting and determining potential causes based on the messages you find in the trace logs. Thank you again for tuning in to this Oracle Identity and Access Management Insights session.